All right, Ninja Nerds, in this video, we're gonna talk about the actual blood flow through the upper limb, okay, which is gonna be the arm. All right, so the whole purpose of this is just to kind of follow a drop of blood from the left ventricle all the way down to the toe, I'm sorry, to the fingers, and then we're gonna talk about in another video how we can bring that blood back up. All right, so the main goal of this video is to talk about the blood flow, the track of it, all the way from the left ventricle all the way down to the fingers, and then another video we'll have talking about it coming back up. So let's go ahead and get started. So within this flow chart, again, first thing that we're gonna have to start with is the left ventricle. The left ventricle is the pump of the systemic circuit, right? So from the left ventricle, the ventricle is actually going to contract and push the blood into what's called the ascending aorta through what's called the aortic semilunar valve. So it'll push it into what's called the ascending aorta. Now, from the ascending aorta, the aorta is gonna start going and arching. Okay, so when it starts getting ready to go up and gets ready to start descending, it makes like a nice little arch. So again, as it ascends and it starts to descend, it makes a nice little arch. That part that it's called, is called the aortic arch. Okay, so we left ventricle ascending aorta to the aortic arch. Now, off the aortic arch, three vessels are gonna come off. The first one is gonna be called the brachiocephalic. So the first one is called the brachiocephalic trunk or the brachiocephalic artery, which splits. Then the next one is gonna be called the left common carotid artery, okay? That's the next one that comes off. And then the third and final one that comes off the aortic arch is called the left subclavian artery, okay? So left ventricle ascending aorta, aortic arch, brachiocephalic, which branches into, the uh, again, aortic arch branches into brachiocephalic, left common carotid, and left subclavian. Now, the brachiocephalic continues and it splits into two other vessels. One of them, again, you saw left common, well, where's the right one? Right here. So this is going to be the right common carotid artery. Then you see left subclavian, you're like, oh, where's the right subclavian? It comes off the brachiocephalic. So this would be the right subclavian. Now we're gonna follow the right subclavian, all the branches that are going you know, from the, sub, the right subclavian all the way down to the fingers. Again, realize that everything we're saying about the rest, right subclavian would apply to the left subclavian. Okay, we're just focusing here on the right side. Okay, cool. The right subclavian then is gonna give off many branches along its way. One of the branches is actually called the thyro cervical branch. So it gives off a thyro cervical branch. It also gives off some arteries that supply the posterior part of the circle willis. Those are called your vertebral, your vertebral arteries. These are the ones that run up through the transverse foramina. Then it gives off some ones that supply the posterior part of the, the I'm sorry, the internal part of the thorax. So they call this the internal thoracic arteries, okay? So it gives off some internal thoracic arteries. So again, we got the thyrocervical, vertebral, and the internal thoracic arteries. Then it continues as what's called the axillary artery. Now, the axillary artery is a very, very important artery. It's actually gonna give off a couple of different branches, okay? One of the branches of the axillary artery is going to be called a very, very special one. This one here is called the subscapular artery. So it's called the subscapular artery. Supplies a lot of the structures that like the subscapularis muscle, as well as other scapular muscles of the rotator cuff and around the actual scapula, okay? Then it's gonna give off another one. One is gonna be called the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So one is gonna be called the posterior circumflex humeral artery. It's also gonna give off another one, which is gonna come around the anterior side of the humerus. This is gonna be called the anterior circumflex humeral artery. Okay, and then the last one is gonna be the continuation of the axillary artery, and this is gonna be called the brachial artery. Okay, it's gonna be called the brachial artery. Okay, so right subclavian gives off a thyrocervical branch, a vertebral branch, an internal thoracic branch, and continues to the axillary artery. As the axillary artery continues to move down the arm, it gives off a subscapular branch, an anterior and posterior circumflex humor branch, and continues as the brachial artery. The brachial artery will then give off three branches. One branch is called the deep brachial artery. Okay, the reason why it's deep is it's gonna go 
deep within the arm and supply the actual posterior muscles of the arm, like the triceps. <clears throat> then, the brachial actually gives off two other branches. One is called the radial artery. The other one is called the ulnar artery, okay? So it gives off a radial and an ulnar artery. The ulnar artery, as it continues, it gives off another branch, a small little communicating branch that actually runs in between the radius and the ulna within what's called the interosseous membrane, which is just a dense, fibrous, irregular connective tissue. So this one is called the common, and right away when you hear common, automatically think, oh, this is going to be branching. It's going to. So it's called the common interosseous artery. Okay? Common interosseous. Then the common interosseous artery is actually going to branch. It's going to split into an anterior and a posterior interosseous. So one of the branches is going to be called the anterior interosseous. And the other one is going to be called the posterior interosseous. OK? Again, common interosseous is going to branch into the anterior and the posterior interosseous. We'll talk about why these two are giving off a nice little anastomosis to what's called the dorsal carpal branch. We'll get to there in just a second. Okay, so now what happens is there's going to be a lot of anastomoses that you're going to see here, okay? A lot of them. So anastomosis, what is the definition of anastomosis? It's basically an, uh, an alternative or collateral channel that the blood can actually flow through. A lot of different types of uh, alternate pathways for the blood to flow through, okay? So what happens is the ulnar artery and the radial artery are going to communicate with one another. They're going to form little connections with one another. When they do, and they give off different branches that fuse with one another, they fuse and form three specialized structures, okay? One of them is going to be a fused structure on the dorsal part of the hand, the posterior part of the hand, okay? This is called the dorsal carpal arch, okay? Then the other two branches that are going to come here, the radial and the ulna are going to give off other two branches that will fuse together, and these are going to be on the palm. One is going to be a little bit more superficial, closer to the top of the skin, and one's going to be deeper, okay? So we call these, since they're on the palm, and they're little, one's superficial and one's deep, we call one of them the superficial, so we should actually, let me put here, the deep, we'll put this one first, deep, palmer, arch, and then over here we're going to have the superficial palmer arch. Okay? So three arches here. Ulnar radial come together and give off little communicating branches that form the dorsal carpal arch, form the deep palmer arch, and the superficial palmer arch. Okay? Now, the dorsal carpal arch is actually going to get some blood from the anterior and posterior interosseous arteries, okay? So that's where that little anastomosis takes place. So you're seeing that there's, this dorsal carpal arch is getting three vessels feeding into it, ulnar and radial branches, and these anterior and posterior interosseous branches, okay? That's feeding into this dorsal carpal arch. The dorsal carpal arch, then coming off of that arch, gives off what's called dorsal metacarpal uh, arteries. So then you're going to have what's called dorsal metacarpal arteries. Then from the metacarpal arteries, it's going to branch out into nice little digital ones that are going to go to the fingers, right? So they're going to have what's called dorsal digital arteries. Now, the deep palmar arch only gives off some small metatarsal arteries. I'm sorry, metacarpal arteries, not foot arteries. These are hand arteries, so metacarpal arteries. So the deep palmar arch is going to give off what's called your palmar metacarpal arteries, right? Now, the superficial palmar arch is going to give off these specialized little structures here called the common palmar digital arteries. Now, what's really cool here is the deep palmar arch is going to give way to the palmar metacarpal, right? The palmar metacarpal is then going to give some type of anastomosis or fusion connection with the common palmar digital arteries, okay? So as you're seeing, there's so many different anastomoses in here, okay? We're not even mentioning all of them. We're just kept trying to keep it as simple as possible, okay? All right, so dorsal carpal arch can give off the dorsal metacarpal and the dorsal digital. Deep palmar arch gives off the palmar metacarpal, which can actually fuse or anastomose with the common palmar digital arteries that are coming from the superficial palmar arch. Then common, oh, it's gonna branch. So what is it gonna branch into? 
proper polymer digital arteries. So the common polymer are going to branch into what's called proper polymer digital arteries. Then as you see here, you're like, oh wow, there's a little intercommunication between these two. There's a communication between the dorsal digital arteries and the proper palmar digital arteries. That's very interesting because these are actually called the oblique intercapitular arteries. We're not going to write these down, but I'm just showing you that these are little fusion connections between these guys. So there's tons and tons of anastomoses here. Okay? All right, ready guys? Here we go. Quick recap. Blood's going to flow from the left ventricle into the ascending aorta, into the aortic arch. The aortic arch can give off a left subclavian, a left common carotid, and a brachiocephalic trunk. The brachiocephalic trunk will split into the right common carotid and the right subclavian. The right subclavian will continue and give off branches along the process. He'll give off a thyrocervical branch, a vertebral branch, an internal thoracic branch, and he'll continue as the axillary artery. The axillary artery will give off a subscapular branch, a posterior circumflex humeral branch, an anterior circumflex humeral branch, and it'll continue as the brachial artery. The brachial artery will give off a deep brachial branch. It'll give off a radial and an ulnar artery as the continuation. The ulnar artery can give off a branch called the common interosseous, which can branch into the anterior and posterior interosseous. Then the ulnar and the radial artery can have communicating branches that come together to form three structures. One is called the dorsal carpal arch, the deep palmar arch, and the superficial palmar arch. The dorsal carpal arch is also going to get blood from the anterior and posterior interosseous artery through an anastomosis connection. Then the dorsal carpal arch is going to empty the blood into the dorsal metacarpal arteries and then into the dorsal digital arteries. The radial and the ulnar also form, the, we said, the deep palmar arch and the superficial palmar arch. The deep palmar arch is going to give way to the palmar metacarpal arteries, which will form an anastomosis with the common palmar digital arteries. And the common palmar digital arteries are coming from the superficial palmar arch. So the common palmar digital arteries will empty into the proper palmar digital arteries. And again, there will be another anastomosis through what's called the oblique intercapitular arteries between the dorsal digital and the proper palmar digital arteries. All right, engineers, so in a nutshell, we basically covered all the actual blood flow down the upper limb or the arms, right? So I hope it all made sense. I hope that you guys really did enjoy it. And I hope it helped, I really do. If it did, please hit the like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. What I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to step out of frame so that you guys can write this down for your own use. All right, engineers, as always, until next time.